to circuit theory quick revision class let's start from the beginning first one is charge so there are two type of charges one is positive and a negative charge these positive and negative charges will always opposite to each other the traveling direction if you observe if i am bringing two positive charges together they will be repel each other two negative charges will repel each other if you are bringing one positive and a negative charges they will always attract each other next by moving these charges we can experience the flow of current if you are thinking about the positive current positive current will flow in the direction of positive charges negative current will flows in the direction of negative charges so current and electrons are always opposite to each other and uh, the various the relation between charge and the current i is equal to dq by dt from this q is equal to integral of t1 to dt and we can really bring the relation q is equal to integral of i into d into dt next uh, sorry i into dt and next one is if you are discussing about uh, the current there are two types of current one is dc current and another one is ac current dc current is always constant with respect to time period ac current is varying with respect to time period like sinusoidal square any other waveform which is having positive and negative sign is simply called alternating current next let us discuss about voltage voltage is simply amount of work done with respect to charge is simply defined as voltage with the help of voltage we are experiencing the current flow in the circuit in a closed path next if you are talking about power and energy we know the direct formula of power p is equal to dw by dt if you want to define it in terms of voltage and current of course we can do this equation can be rewritten as dw by dq into dq by dt we can simply call it as power so p is equal to v into i the next one is the power relation p is equal to dw by dt as we saw from this if the power is given and if you want to calculate the energy this will be the formula next when we are talking about the source and the load sink means the power absorbing elements if we are talking about the source it will always tries to deliver the power so for the person who is trying to deliver the power for him current entering point is minus leaving point will be plus if a person is absorbing the power then for him current entering point will be plus leaving point will be minus so the next one let us discuss about the uh, types of the elements and uh, that we are using in our circuit theory of course in our entire electrical engineering let us start from the beginning the first one is resistor we know there are two type of resistor one is linear resistor another one is non linear resistor in terms of linear resistor the relation between the voltage and the current is always linear and we can apply ohms law such that we can write all these formulas when we are discussing about non linear resistor these type of relations are not valid for non linear resistor the property of the non linear resistor can be anything like you can observe if you draw the relation between voltage and the current for a non linear resistor it is unpredictable this waveform can be like this or can be like this or can be like this or it can be like this so non linear resistor is unpredictable nature so when you are solving the problems in your examination basically for a non linear resistor they will be giving the relation between the voltage and the current and you will have to apply the kvl equation for this given circuit you will have to bring one more equation by solving the given equation under kvl equation you can easily figure out the properties of the resistor while talking about the linear resistor we know the other things power absorption of a resistor p is equal to v into i it can also be written in the alternative ways and we can also calculate the energy by using e is equal to integral of p into dt next now some other questions uh, some other observations about the resistor first one resistor can also be written as rho l by a in terms of its physical properties and uh, area can also be rewritten in terms of volume we know volume v is equal to a into l from this area can be if you replace area by v by l you will be getting this relation and uh, the alternative relation is the circle <coughs> the cross sectional area of the conductor is a so area can also be replaced by pi into r square and i can replace it by pi into d square by 4 what is this r is nothing but radius radius can be replaced by diameter d by 2 that is what written there so we can write this resistor in terms of radian we can also write it in terms of sorry uh, cross sectional area in terms of diameter we can write or in terms of volume also we can write so based on the questions that has been asked in your examination so just to go ahead with the corresponding formula next i think if you are talking about the uh, resistor connections if two resistors are connected in series then we can simply say by adding them we can find out the total r equivalent and the alternative way is total supply voltage divided by total supply current now if you want to know the voltage drop across the series elements we have to apply voltage division rule we know the voltage division rule the corresponding element r1 if you want to know the voltage drop across the resistor r1 then total supply voltage and voltage drop across the resistor r1 divided by total resistor similarly for the voltage drop across the resistor r2 total voltage into resistor r2 divided by total resistor this is how we are applying voltage division rule similarly if two resistors are connected in series then the power formula will be v square by r1 and uh, total r equivalent we know so this can also be written as in terms of power 
Next, uh, when we are talking about parallel circuit, this is the formula to calculate the R equivalent. Actually, it will be derived from here for the R equivalent circuit. We know this. If two resistors are connected in parallel, this is how we are calculating the R equivalent. Now, from this, for parallel circuits, if we are exploring the uh, individual power ratings, then you will have to go ahead with the I square into R1, that is I1 square into R1 and I2 square into R2. What is the reason behind of this? In serial circuit, voltage rating, voltage will be varying, in parallel circuit, current will be varying. So, you will have to define the elements rating in serial circuits in terms of voltage, in parallel circuit, in terms of current. Next. Let us discuss about inductor. We know the inductor relation V is equal to L into dI by dt. It can also be written as N into d pi by dt. And the energy that is stored in the inductor is simply called magnetic energy. And the next thing is, if you are defining the inductor in terms of its physical parameter, uh, its relative permeability into number of turns, that is N square times of number of turns in the cross-sectional area divided by total length of the coil. So that will be the alternative formula to calculate the inductance offered by the coil. Now, if you are defining the energy of the inductor, E is equal to half Li square. Next, from this, if I am defining the power, power P is equal to energy by time period, which can also be defined as work done by time period. Now, from this, if I am defining, uh, we know the alternative formula to define the power for an inductor is P is equal to V into I. We know V can be replaced by L into dI by dt. So, this is the alternative way to calculate the power. Now, when we are talking about a lossless inductor, the relation between the current and the time period. If I am drawing the current, when we are charging the inductor, current will be continuously charging. After a certain time period, inductor will get what? Saturated. After that, inductor will be started behaving as a constant current source with a zero voltage. Because at a steady state, when, when we are charging the inductor, once it is fully charged, a fully charged inductor will become a constant current source with a zero voltage. That's why, see there, during the charging, the voltage across the inductor is constant. Once your inductor is fully charged, then the voltage here, here after see the voltage will be going down to zero voltage. So, a fully charged inductor will act as a constant current source with a zero voltage drop. Similarly, if you are talking about the uh, total properties, inductor property will become L1 plus L2. When we are connecting the two inductor in series, that is the formula to calculate the L equivalent. Similarly, if you are talking about the inductive reactants, in AC circuits, we will be defining inductive reactants. So, there the formula will be inductive reactants of the inductor will be XL equal to J omega L and the relation between the voltage and the current in case of inductor is V is equal to I into J omega L. We know this. Next, if you are connecting as a shell, if two uh, inductors are connected in series, then here this is the formula to calculate the total inductive reactants. They, we can simply add them. From this also you can explore the formula for L equivalent. The next one is similarly if you are connecting two inductors in parallel, then this is the formula to calculate the value of total L equivalent offered by the circuit. Now, Suppose in your examination, instead of giving inductive coil, sorry, inductor, if they are simply calling it as inductive coil, then inductive coil means they are considering the internal resistance offered by the coil also. Then in that case, you will have to draw the uh, redraw the inductive circuit by considering its internal resistive drop also. So inductor means simple inductor, inductive coil means you will have to consider its internal resistance effect also. Next, capacitor. When we are discussing about capacitor, capacitor is storing its energy in terms of potential. So this is called potential energy. The thing is, if I am writing the relation between voltage and the current for a capacitor, this can be written as I is equal to C into dV by dt. That's all. This is the relation we know. Similarly, if you want to express in terms of its physical property, you will have to take area offered by the plates, epsilon into area offered by the plates divided by distance between the plates. This is the formula to calculate the capacitor and this is the energy formula and this is the power formula. This power can also be expressed in terms of V into C, uh, sorry, V into C dot dV by dt. Next, when I am defining the current versus uh, time period for in case of uh, inductor, how will you define this? While talking about the uh, <coughs> capacitor, voltage versus time period first. Voltage is continuously charging. When the moment you are charging the capacitor, voltage will be continuously varying with respect to time period. Once your capacitor is fully charged, then it will become a constant current source. A fully charged capacitor will be acting as a constant current source and uh, with a zero voltage. At a steady state, the behavior of the uh, <coughs> capacitor will become open circuit. So, the current flowing through the capacitor will be open circuit. So, when it is charging, current will be constantly flowing. When it is fully charged, then current will become zero and you can say it will be acting as a uh, <coughs> C. Voltage will not be zero, current will be zero voltage will be maximum. So, a fully charged capacitor will be acting as a constant voltage source with a zero ampere current. Understood? 
Next, when two capacitors are connected in parallel, then if I am talking about its capacitive reactance, Xc is equal to 1 by j omega c, this will be the total equivalent value. Now, if you are replacing it by in terms of its inductive reactance, then the C equivalent value of a seriously connected capacitor, this is the formula. Next, if two capacitors are connected in parallel, then this is the formula to obtain the Xc equivalent. From this, if you observe, C equivalent will become C1 plus C2. Now, let us discuss about the sources. When we are talking about the sources, there are two types of sources, one is independent source and another one is independent source. So, independent source, it can be independent voltage source or independent current source. While talking about the dependent sources, see, it is a current source, this current source can be depend on current, then we are calling it as current, see, we are controlling this current source with the help of a current, that is called current controlled current source, we are controlling the source with the help of a current, so current controlled current source. What about, now if I am highlighting it by K into I. The source is a voltage source, but I am controlling it in terms of uh, current. So, this is called current controlled voltage source. The first one is current controlled current source. Now, if I am calling it as K into V, I can say controlling element is V, source is a current source. This is voltage controlled current source. And the last one, it is a voltage source, if I am calling it as K into I, controlling element is current, where a source is a voltage source. This is called current controlled voltage source. So, th there will be totally four types of uh, dependent sources and uh, these are all the representations. Next one. Now, let us apply KCL. We know KCL means algebraic sum. At any selected node, incoming current equal to outgoing current. That is sum of incoming current equal to outgoing current. If you select at this node, the incoming currents are I2, I1, I3. If I will be adding all this current, this current will be equal to algebraic sum of outgoing currents. The outgoing currents are I4, I5, I6. This is uh, KCL. Now, suppose if some circuit will be given to you and you will be requested to identify the number of glitch of current law that can be applied for the given circuit. The formula is number of nodes minus 1. Similarly, while talking about glitch of voltage law, in any loop, if I am just adding all voltages, that will be equal to 0. Now, if you start from the supply voltage, let us take, uh, I am starting from here. Minus supply voltage, I am taking starting polarities. And I am running in clockwise direction. Starting polarity is minus in clockwise. Starting polarity is plus. Inductor can be written as J times of. Inductor voltage drop can be written as J times of omega L. And for a resistor, starting polarity is plus. And a resistive drop is VR. For a capacitor, starting polarity is plus. But capacitor can be written as J minus J times of. VC will be equal to 0. So, Kirchhoff voltage law can be defined in two ways. One is supply voltage will be equal to addition of all the load voltage drops. Alternative way is algebraic sum of the loop voltage will be equal to zero. That's all. Now, if some circuit will be given to you, electric circuit, and you will be requested to identify the number of uh, KVL that can be applied. KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law. The formula is number of branches, B indicates number of branches minus number of nodes minus one. This is the formula. Next. Let us apply star delta conversion formula, star delta. If a star circuit will be given to you, and how will you convert it into delta? So, let us just name it 1, 2, 3. I am just explaining about uh, name 1. First, draw its equivalent delta. After that, suppose if you want to identify the resistor between 1 and 2. Go to the corresponding star here between 1 and 2. We have two resistors, R1 and R2. Take those two resistors, first add them and then multiply them in the denominator. The resistor that we left, here we are considering only two branch resistors, the missing resistor is RC, uh, the R3, that will be lies here. Similarly, if you are calculating R23 between 2 and 3, now go back to here, between 2, we have R2 and R3, take them, first add them, then plus multiply them in the denominator missing resistor. This is how we are converting star to delta. Similarly, if I have delta, if I want equivalent star, simply first draw the equivalent star. Now, this is node 1, same node 1. So, in the node 1, whatever the resistor that you are having here. So, let us assume, in this node 1, just uh, observe the connected branches. Take those resistor, multiply them in the numerator. In the denominator, you have to add all the resistor value. Similarly, if you are calculating R2, how will you do that? Here, R2, R12 into R23, denominator, addition of all the resistor. Similarly, R3, R3 will become here. At 3, we have 2 resistor. Multiplication of these two, denominator total value. That's all. Next, observation. Suppose in, a, in star and delta circuits, if all the resistor values are equal, then I can say 
the relation between star and delta will be r star equal to r delta by 3 or the delta resistance will be equal to 3 times of star resistor. So from this what I can say, if delta connected circuit will be given, if you want to convert it into equivalent star, then take the individual branches resistor divided by 3, that will be give you equivalent star. Similarly, from star to delta, you can convert. Next, if you are talking about ideal voltage source, ideal voltage source means it, it, its internal resistance will be 0. For a ideal uh, voltage source, its internal resistance will be 0. For a practical voltage source, its internal resistor will be connected in series with the voltage source and uh, that value will be very very low. Ideally it will be 0 but practically it will be very very low. And uh, if you are trying to apply for ideal voltage source, if you are trying to apply Kirchhoff current law, you cannot apply because the problem is the current that is flowing through the voltage source is purely arbitrary. The current that is going uh, through the voltage source for a ideal voltage source is arbitrary, purely arbitrary, it is unpredictable. So you cannot apply Kirchhoff current law anywhere here. Next, and uh, this will be the response uh, between the voltage versus current in case of Kirchhoff current law. Next, while talking about ideal current source, if you are talking about ideal current source, the uh, resistor which are connected in parallel will be infinity. For a ideal current source, the internal resistance will be infinity. For a ideal voltage source, uh, serious resistor will be zero. Parallel we are not considering, only serious resistor. Uh, practically, it will be very less. Here, ideally, parallel resistor will be infinity. Practically, it will be very, very high. Practically, it will be very, very high. So, when you are talking about uh, current, uh, sorry, uh, ideal current source, Kirchhoff voltage law cannot be applied because if you observe the uh, voltage across the current source, that will be arbitrary. So, it is a purely arbitrary value, we cannot guess it. So, the next thing is, while talking about the ideal current source, current is constant, but voltage is unpredictable. Similarly, while talking about ideal voltage source, voltage is constant, but current is unpredictable. That is why we are, we cannot apply KCL for uh, ideal voltage source, KVL for ideal current source. Next. If you talk about nodal, we know how to apply nodal, right? Suppose if I want to know the voltage at this point, what will you do? So step number one, we will have to uh, assume that this is the selected node and uh, superior node and here we will have to find out the unknown voltage Vx. So what is our assumption is from the selected branch all the currents are going away. So if I will be writing the expression for three, th these three branches, current can be written as Vx minus of minus 10 by 1 plus Vx uh, minus 10 by 1 plus sorry minus 5 equal to 0. By solving this we can easily find out the value of Vx. Now how I did this? While applying nodal analysis selected node is the superior one and that will going to deliver the current for the entire circuit. By assuming like that you will have to take this current path away from the selected node and then apply nodal Vx minus of minus 10 divided by 1 will be giving this and then Vx minus 10 will be giving 1 and then Vx. So in this branch current value is already given but it is opposite to the direction of the nodal assumption so you will have to put minus 5. By solving this you can find out the value of Vx. So this is how we are identifying the unknown voltages with the help of nodal. You all know this. Now in, in nodal uh, circuits while if somebody will be asking you how will you identify the number of node pair voltages then this is the formula where n indicates number of nodes. Similarly, while talking about the superposition theorem, superposition theorem you can apply when we are having more than one sources with a different frequency. Suppose one DC supply will be given and one AC supply will be given, sorry, one AC supply will be given. In that case, so this circuit is having more than one source and it is having two different uh, sources. In that case, we can apply superposition theorem. I hope you all know the procedure for this. Next, what are the limitations of superposition theorem? Superposition theorem is not applicable for nonlinear circuits and the power relation is invalid in case of superposition theorem. For unilateral circuits also superposition theorem is not applicable. And uh, superposition theorem can be applicable for the circuit which is having initial conditions also. That is most important point. Next, while talking about Thevenin theorem, see I hope uh, you all know how to draw the Thevenin equivalent circuit. If any circuit will be given with a variable load resistor or some load resistor. Then what you will have to do? We have to draw its equivalent Thevenin circuit. Reduce the complete circuit, calculate the value of Vth and connect the value of Rth in series with the Vth. That is Thevenin theorem. I hope you all know the procedures for Vth and Rth calculations. Like when our circuit is having only uh, independent sources, then first to learn. There are uh, different procedures. What I am saying is now take a 10 voltage source and a 5 ampere current 
and a 1 ohm resistor, 2 ohm resistor. I just wanted to know the value of terminal voltage and RTH when your circuit is having only independent sources. And identify the procedure. Just you know the procedure. If you don't know, just recollect and try to figure out the answer. Next, you will have to remember how to calculate the uh, VTH and RTH in case of uh, when our circuit is having only, uh, sorry, both the dependent and uh, independent sources. For an example, if I am having a 10 voltage source under the value of K equal to 2, and then let us take this is 1 ohm, this is 1 ohm. Calculate the value of VTH and RTH. When your circuit is having both the dependent and the independent sources, we will be having two different procedures. First one, by calculating terminal voltage and an Arton current, and by taking the ratio between them, you can calculate the value of RTH. The other way is, remove the load, deactivate all independent sources. All independent sources means, which will be represented by circle. It may be a current source or it may be a voltage source. Voltage source means, you will have to short circuit for deactivating. Current source means, you will have to open circuit for deactivation. Next, you will have to connect the external voltage and the current, VDC and IDC across the load after removing the load and to bring the relation between VDC and IDC to calculate the value of RTH. I hope you all know this. Next, if your circuit is having only dependent sources, then the one and only procedure is remove the load from the load point and then calculate the value of RTH. Okay. And uh, when your circuit is having only uh, dependent sources, the value of VTH and the not and current both will be 0. For an example, you can take this question, K equal to 1 and this will be 2 ohm, 2 ohm. 2 ohm, 2 ohm. Calculate the value of VTH and RTH and the Norton current. Verify whether you are getting 0 or not and calculate the value of RTH. Drop your answer in the command section. Next. So, let us talk about its equivalent circuit. So, after calculating the value of VTH and RTH, you will have to connect them in series. If you are connecting, the, if you are doing the same thing for Norton circuit. See, in Norton circuit, the only uh, thing is instead of considering voltage, we are considering current. So, not on resistance, terminal resistance, both are same only. Whatever the procedure that you are following to calculate the terminal resistance in any given circuit, you can follow the same procedure to explore the value of not on resistance. That's all. Now, if you have terminal equivalent circuit, by applying source transformation technique, you can bring its correspondent current, uh, not on equivalent circuit. So, not on equivalent circuit means short circuit current will be in parallel with the not on resistor. After that, we, we can reconnect the load. Similarly, in thermal circuit, thermal resistor and the thermal voltage source will be connected in series. After that, you can reconnect the load with the circuit. Understood? That's all. Next, let us uh, uh, have the observations. In thermal theorem, the applicable things are. It is not applicable for unilateral circuits. It will applicable only for bilateral circuit. And it is also not applicable for non-linear circuits. It will applicable only for linear circuits. Now, let us uh, see the various conditions for uh, while applying maximum power transfer theorem. First of all, uh, if your circuit is having only, uh, if your load is purely resistive and it is a DC circuit, then the formula is load resistance should become equal to source resistance to achieve the maximum power and the formula, maximum power transfer formula will be VTH square divided by 4 into RTH, that is all. Next, suppose if you are having uh, impedance, circuit is AC circuit and the load is having both the resistor and the inductive reactors, then what is the formula? The first case, during that condition, there are two, uh, two people, one is load resistor, load reactor. If only load resistance is variable, load reactance is fixed, then this is the condition to obtain the maximum power. If uh, load is, if XL is variable, re resistance is fixed, then this is the condition to obtain the maximum power, XL equal to minus XS. Then if both load and X, uh, both RL and XL, both load resistance and load reactances are variable, then this is the formula to obtain the value of low, uh, maximum power at the source, sorry, at the load side. Maximum power will get transferred from source to load. Next, when suppose if the value of inductive reactance, load inductive reactance is 0 and uh, only load resistor is there and that is variable. In that case, this will be the formula to obtain the load resistor. Understood? Yes. Next, let us discuss about transient response. In case of transient response for RL circuit, this is the most important formula. And here you know tau is equal to L by R. And the another thing you will have to remember is IL of 0 minus equal to IL of 0 equal to IL of 0 plus. This is the another most important condition for uh, RL circuit. For RC circuit, what you will have to remember? Vc of t equal to Vc of infinity plus Vc of 0 minus minus Vc of infinity into e power minus t by tau, where tau is equal to Rth into C. That is thermal resistance. You will have to treat the capacitor as your load to calculate the value of this Rth. Similarly, you will have to treat the inductor as your load while calculating this Rth. Okay. Next. Sorry. Now, 
when we are discussing about RLC circuit. For serious circuit, uh, this is the voltage expression when your circuit will be under damped. And uh, here, this is all the formula to calculate. So, this is the steady state voltage drop across the capacitor and its corresponding expression is clearly given. Here, omega d is uh, damped natural frequency and here it is the formula. You know, omega n is uh, undamped natural frequency and here this is damping factor and this is the formula to obtain the damping factor for serious RLC circuit. So, in serious RLC circuit, we have different types of system. One is under damped system and uh, critically damped system. This is the formula to obtain the voltage drop across the serious RLC circuit capacitor. This is voltage drop across the serious capacitor. Okay, and uh, in case of critical damping, and this is the voltage drop across the capacitor in case of over damping. Next, while going to parallel circuit, in place of uh, formula, whatever the formula that we have seen here, replace the voltage by current. You will be getting the expression for parallel circuit for under over for under damping, critical damping, over damping. And uh, all you have to do is in while solving the second order circuits problems in transient case, most of the time the question will be asked this. What is the value of IL of 0, VC of 0, DIL of 0 plus by DT, DVC of 0 plus by DT and D square IL of uh, 0 plus by DT square, D square VC of 0 plus by DT square and VC of infinity, IL of infinity. These are all the most repeated questions when it comes to uh, C, <coughs> sorry, second order circuits. So try to learn how to solve all those questions. Next, uh, some of the Laplace you will have to remember while talking about inductor and capacitor. For resistor, if you apply Laplace, nothing will change. R simply will become R only, will not change. But for a inductor, and uh, with the initial cu current IL of 0 plus, this will be the equivalent circuit in terms of voltage drop, and this is the equivalent circuit in terms of current drop. Now, sorry, current, in terms of current. Now, for a capacitor with the initial voltage, this is the equivalent circuit while applying Laplace. In terms of current source, this will be the equivalent circuit. Okay. Next, if you are talking about sinusoidal sources, we know sinusoidal instantaneous voltage, instantaneous current representation. This is the formula for relation between RMS and maximum. This is the RMS current and the maximum current. This is the formula for real power and reactive power. Next, if the value of pi is 0, then this is the formula to calculate the real power. Circuit will be purely resistor when pi equal to 0. And the real power will never ever consumed by inductor and capacitor. Inductor and capacitor will consume only reactive power. Resistor will consume only real power. Okay. And this is the formula for power factor. This is the formula for apparent power. So this apparent power can also be written in the alternative way. That is plus or minus JQ. If the reactive power is lagging, then plus. Reactive power is leading, then you will have to put minus Q. Next, resonance circuit. Now when we are talking about serious RLC circuit, first of all, in general, what is resonance? Resonance means imaginary part of the any circuit will be equal to 0. It may be impedance or admittance, serious circuit, parallel circuit, anything, imaginary part of the circuit will going to be 0. Now in case of serious RLC circuit, calculate the total impedance, identify its imaginary part equal to 0. By solving this, you can calculate the value of resonant frequency. And this is the formula for resonant frequency for serious circuit. At a resonance, circuit will become purely resistive. And I can say it's a, in case of serious resonance circuit, what will happen is if you observe the voltage drop across the inductor and the voltage drop across the capacitor, magnitudes are equal, but their signature is opposite to each other. If inductor will be plus 10 voltage, then capacitor will be having minus 10 voltage. So if you are adding this two, net voltage will become zero. So that's why serious RLC circuit, LC circuit, the combination of L and C voltages will be acting as a short circuit. The net voltage will become zero, no? Zero voltage means short circuit. Okay. Next, and uh, at a, at a resonance, the voltage drop will be supply voltage will be equal to voltage drop across the resistor. Why? Because the addition of inductor and the capacitor voltage will be zero, no? So supply voltage will be simply dropped across the resistor. Circuit will be acting as a purely unity power factor circuit at a resonance. And the phase angle difference between the supply current and the supply voltage will be zero. And the impedance at a resonance will be minimum in serious RLC. Current will be maximum. And uh, we know the magnitude of the old inductor voltage and the capacitor voltage are equal. But their voltage value is higher than the value of supply voltage in serious RLC at a resonance. That's why it is called voltage amplifier or magnifier circuit. It means voltage will get boosted and it is higher than the value of supply voltage at a resonance in case of inductor and a capacitor. Next quality factor QF. So quality factor formula. See first of all you can define if you know the supply voltage and the quality factor then you, you can easily identify the value of inductor voltage or capacitor voltage at a resonance. 
or a else I can say quality factor is the ratio between inductor voltage divided by supply voltage or capacitor voltage divided by supply voltage or inductive reactants divided by resistor or capacitive reactants uh, divided by resistor so these are all the formulas to calculate the value of quality factor and uh, see this is lower cut off frequency and upper cut off frequency uh, during the resonance circuits and the uh, resonance frequency can also be calculated in terms of geometric mean of lower cut off frequency and upper cut off frequency this is the formula for lower cut off frequency for series rlc this is the formula for upper cut off frequency this is the formula for bandwidth between the upper cut off and the lower cut off and it can also be calculated r by l by using resistor and inductor value for series rlc circuit this is the alternative way to calculate the bandwidth quality factor can also be defined in terms of resonant frequency divided by bandwidth or inductive reactants divided by resistor we have seen capacity reactants divided by resistor it can also be if you replace resonant frequency omega r equal to 1 by lc then you will be getting this formula this is alternative way to calculate the value of quality factors do remember all the formulas they are very very important next uh, the question next uh, in series rlc circuit find the uh, frequency offered by the circuit when the voltage across the capacitor will become maximum this is the formula and this is the frequency offered by the circuit when the inductor frequency when the voltage across the capacitor inductor will become maximum when the voltage across the inductor will become maximum this is the frequency and this is the frequency offered by the circuit when the voltage across the uh, capacitor will become maximum first one is for capacitor second one is for inductor next now some of the other uh, direct formulas if you know the bandwidth under uh, resonant frequency by using this formula you can explore the value of lower cut off frequency by using this formula you can explore the value of upper cut off frequency and a series rlc circuit will be simply acting as a band pass filter band pass filter and at resonance the impedance will be equal to sorry not at resonance this is at off power frequencies off power frequencies means at uh, both lower and upper cut off frequencies the value of the impedance will be equal to root 2 times of r whereas the value of r equal to in general i wrote this this is the relation between r and upper cut off lower cut off frequencies here r will be equal to minus of omega l minus 1 by omega c when omega equal to omega e, u sorry omega l at lower cut off frequency you will have to consider minus for upper cut off frequency when omega will be equal to omega u upper cut off frequency you can consider plus next for parallel rlc similarly we will have to consider all the resistor and the inductive reactor capacitor in parallel from the supply voltage this is the formula for resonance circuit and here as is shown this is the bandwidth formula resonant frequency quality factor just to note it down and this is the uh, <laughs> omega n indicates lower cut off frequency omega t indicates upper cut off frequency formulas next this is uh, the lc combination for parallel circuit in parallel circuit they are acting as a open circuit why because il magnitude and ic magnitude both are equal but they are opposing each other they are opposing each other if this is plus 10 ampere then this will be minus 10 ampere if we add both of this 10 minus 10 will become 0 ampere 0 ampere means lc combination will be acting as a open circuit but though they are equal to each other their value is higher than the value of current source actual current source that's why it is called current amplifier or magnifier circuit parallel rlc circuit and these are all the formulas to calculate the quality factor at a resonant source current will be equal to current flowing through the resistor that will be equal to supply voltage divided by resistor okay and at resonance we know capacitive uh, <coughs> a susceptance this is called a susceptance the capacitive susceptance equal to inductive susceptance got it that's all next as is sure the bandwidth formula approximate bandwidth formulas for series and the parallel is same and for parallel rlc circuit parallel rlc circuit will be acting as a band rejector filter at a resonance impedance will be maximum current will be minimum in case of parallel circuit whereas series circuit current will be maximum impedance will be minimum at a resonance next dynamic impedance see there is one more circuit what we saw earlier is all people are connected in series or they are connected in say, uh, parallel now if i am considering a coil we know the equivalent circuit of a coil and it is connected in parallel with the capacitor then that is called a tank circuit for this if you calculate at a resonance if you are calculating the impedance it will become l by rc we are calling it as dynamic impedance because it is varying this res impedance is variable one it is dynamic in nature it is not fixed value it will be varying that's why it will be defined as dynamic impedance and if you, somebody will be asking you to calculate the dynamic impedance it means they are talking about the coil which is connected in parallel with the capacitor tank circuit 
So for this circuit, this is called, we are also calling it as tuned parallel RLC circuit. For this, this is the formula to obtain the resonant frequency. Okay, next. I hope you understood all this. Next, concept of duality. So concept of duality means conductors, parallel in parallel circuit, resistor will be called the conductors. It will be replaced by series resistor. That is a duality, duality each other. If you are converting, if you are drawing the, uh, if you are applying duality property, inductor, this is called a susceptance. In parallel, it is called inductive susceptance. In series, we are calling it as inductive reactors. This is capacitive susceptance. Here, it will become capacitive reactors. Current source will become voltage source. That is the concept of duality. They are dual to each other. So, conductance and resistor, inductive susceptance, inductive reactance, capacitive susceptance, capacitive reactance, voltage source, current source, all are dual to each other. Now, you can observe. So, conductance will be dual of resistor, capacitor will be dual of inductor, and uh, current will be the dual of voltage, and here differentiation will be the dual of integration, and integration will be the dual of uh, differentiation, like mesh will be the dual of nodal, short circuit will be the dual of capacitor. Uh, sorry, open circuit, short circuit will be the dual of open circuit, serious circuit will be the dual of parallel circuit, that's all. So, this is all about the concept of duality. Now, let us discuss about two-port network. So, you know, we know in two-port network, there are so many classification. First one is uh, uh, Z network, it is also called open circuit network and this is the formula. And in two-port, in impedance network, the condition for symmetricity, Z11 should be equal to Z22 and the condition for reciprocity will be Z12 equal to Z21. Similarly, for short circuit or Y parameter, current and this is the equation for uh, Y parameter and this is the condition for reciprocity, this is the condition for symmetricity. Next, ABCD parameter or transmission line parameter, this is the equation and uh, see, there is some uh, mistake here, yes. So, when we are talking about this should not be I, uh, IV2, this will be I1. So, this is transmission line parameter, this is the condition for reciprocity, this is the condition for symmetricity. Next. We are talking about hybrid parameter, these are all the equations, this is the condition for reciprocity, as usual, this is the condition for symmetricity. Next, this is uh, uh, inverse parameter or G parameter, condition for reciprocity, condition for symmetricity. Next, so when two transmission uh, lines, transmission parameters, networks are connected in, if they are cascaded each other, then you have to just to multiply them. So, the ABCD network of the first one will be directly get multiplied with the ABCD network of the second one. So, that will become the resultant ABCD parameter. So, it will be in matrix multiplication. If two impedance are connected in parallel, you can say, sorry, in, uh, this is called uh, uh, impedance network and uh, they will be connected in series circuits, right? So, impedance A and impedance branches of B, both will be connected in series. In that case, what you can add is, so, Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22. It will be added with uh, the second network, Z11, Z12, Z21. Z22. So, when we are talking about impedance parameters, if you are connecting two impedance in series, they will be added. If the two transmission lines are cascaded, they will be multiplied. If two admittance are connected in parallel, once again they will be added. You can add the admittance of this one with this one. Total admittance will get added. Similarly, if you are talking about uh, some other parameters, see, if you are observing the given circuit while solving the problem, if a T structure network will be given, like the given, the one that I am showing. In this circuit, if you are finding, if you are trying to calculate the impedance parameter, this will become Z11 equal to ZA plus ZC, uh, Z12 or Z22 equal to Z21 equal to ZC. Similarly, Z22 will equal to ZB plus ZC. If you remember these relations, you can simply directly give the answer within a very short span of time. So, from this, by solving this, what they will give now in the examination, sometimes they will be saying that a T network and its correspondent uh, impedance parameter Z11, Z12, Z22, Z21 will be given. You will be requested to calculate the value of its correspondent branch impedance values. So, you will have to solve. By, by solving this, you can bring these values. Similarly, if a pi network will be given, you will have to calculate admittance, that is the easy way, calculate the admittance parameters, if pi network will be given, if t network will be given, then go with the impedance parameter, calculate, so here I already wrote the final solutions, and from this, if you are requested to calculate the value of ya, yb, yc, its correspondent uh, admittance parameters, and uh, they will be giving you the uh, two port uh, network, value of y11, value of y12, value of y21, y22 will be given you will have to find out the value of its correspondent branch admittance. So, by writing these relations, by solving from here and here, I brought these relations, that's all. Next, if uh, some other type of network will be given, type uh, lattice network, 
in that case what you'll have to do same relation i wrote it here already z1 1 i wrote already z2 2 both will be same and z1 to z2 1 i wrote from this i also wrote the relations how to calculate z a and z b understood and here if the value of z a in both places if these two values will become from this what you can say is if they will become uh, equal and i can say this setter will be symmetrical if these two values will become equal then i can say your network will become reciprocal conditions observations these are all next let us discuss about magnetically coupled circuit in magnetically coupled circuit what we are doing is in place of voltage we are considering mmf that is n into i i is current in place of current we are considering flux in case of uh, resistor we are considering reluctance so reluctance equal to mmf by phi mmf equal to n into i by phi and here resistor can be replaced by rho l by a here uh, reluctance can be replaced by l by mu into a next if i am talking about electric field intensity in electric circuit this will be voltage by length or distance d and here it can be replaced by same thing but here in place of voltage will be considering mmf and this is will become your magnetic field intensity this will be your electric field intensity understood fine so here next let us discuss about current density here it will be defined as current density can be defined as i by a current per unit area it can also be defined as sigma into e and uh, next uh, corresponding in place of current density here we are considering magnetic flux density and in place of current we will be considering flux and b can be defined as b is equal to mu into h some of the relation that you must learn next uh, if two coils are connected in uh, sorry if you are talking about two magnetic coils when when we are talking about its corresponded uh, magnetic inductance and uh, <coughs> mutual inductance or self inductance while talking about the coil one this is the formula for self inductance its corresponding number of turns into flux generated by the coil one is phi one d phi one by dt this is l one formula similarly for l two its corresponding number of turns and its corresponding self flux d phi by uh, d phi d by dt it's over similarly while talking about mutual inductance see mutual inductance it is the inductance generated by the new neighbor coil like a cause and effect so what i have to do is suppose when i am passing the uh, when i am talking about if i am passing the current through the coil 1 so this will generate some flux that flux will be linked with the coil 2 that is called phi 1 2 so this phi 1 2 and this current i1 current i1 is the current flowing through the coil 1 and its corresponding flux phi 1 to means amount of flux that is traveling from coil 1 to coil 2 by these two people will going to be linked with the number of turns in the coil 2 and they will be generating the mutual inductance so that will be defined as mu 2 1 that is inductance in coil 2 because of the coil 1 similarly when we are talking about if i am passing the current i2 in the second coil so second coil current and the flux that is traveling from coil 2 to coil 1 will be generating the inductance in the coil 1 so number of turns in n1 so there we are generating the mutual inductance okay actually this formula here we are defining m12 mutual inductance in coil 2 because of coil 1 here this is m21 mutual inductance in coil 1 because of coil 2 okay that is m21 that is m12 that's all. next hiding aiding and opposing matches so when we are talking about two coil inductance and, and its corresponding mutual inductance m what we will be doing we will be defining into four way while injecting the current if it is highlighted by a dot at a both coil current entering point will be highlighted by dot then they are aiding each other then the formula will be l1 plus l2 plus 2m and similarly if the dot will be highlighted in the opposite manner opposite manner means suppose if i am taking coil will be uh, it will be represented at the current leaving point will be highlighted by the dot in both uh, conductor current leaving point will be highlighted by dot in that case also you will have aiding nature so both coil will be aiding each, each other so once again the formula will be l1 plus l2 plus 2m only now suppose in one coil dot will be represented at the current entering point and another coil dot will be represented at the sorry not here dot will be represented at the current leaving point then what will happen so what i am saying is so in one coil dot will be here another coil dot will be here so here at the current entering point dot is there here at the current leaving point dot is there in that case the formula will be l1 plus l2 minus 2m similarly one dot is here another dot is here in the first coil at the current leaving point dot is there in the second coil at the current entering point dot is there 
opposing nature so once again you will be getting minus and you know the relation mutual inductance and self inductance in between we will have a coefficient of coupling and the coefficient of coupling lies between 0 to 1 and uh, this is the ratio between useful flux divided by total flux now the value of k will become 1 for ideal coupling 100 percentage maximum coupling no uh, wastage flux but uh, if the circuit is isolated none of the flux are linking between the coil then I k will be 0 but for a practical circuit you know some cases the value of k will be always c it should not be greater than 1 for a practical circuit the value of k is always less than 1 it will never ever become equal to 1 and almost it, of course it will also be not equal to 0 we will be trying to maintain some reasonable value like uh, above 0.5 i can say and it should be less than 1 don't forget it should not be greater than 1 maximum value is 1 1 only it will not go beyond that next see the most important if somebody will be asking you to calculate the leakage factor then you will have to take reciprocal it means leakage factor formula is total flux divided by leakage flux that is the uh, not le leakage flux useful flux sorry so it is just opposite to the value of coefficient of coupling next if i am connecting uh, if two inductive coils are coupled in parallel then the formula to calculate the l equivalent first one if they are aiding in nature current entering point will be dot here also current entering point will be dot in that case formula will be l1 plus l2 minus m square divided by l1 plus l2 minus 2m numerator minus denominator also minus for aiding for opposing numerator will be minus only but denominator will be plus for opposing minus for aiding understood that's all next while discussing about transformer coupling suppose uh, transformer coupled circuit will be given to you and uh, there are two types the nature suppose the mutual inductance will become positive like they are attracting each other in that case that will this will be the electrical equivalent circuit self inductance l1 will be given l2 will be given its correspondent mutual inductance will be defined and uh, the uh, circuit will be coupled they are aiding each other transformer primary flux and the secondary flux pi 1 and pi 2 are aiding each other in that case this will be positive coupling this is the equivalent circuit for negative coupling they are opposing you see current entering point current is entering at the dot current is leaving at the dot in that case that is called a negative coupling usually our transformer is a negative coupled device why primary and the secondary flux are always opposite to each other pi 1 and phi 2 are opposite to each other in our transformer original transformer so transformer is a negative coupled device this is the perfect suitable circuit for the transformer okay so this is the formula we know the relation between mutual uh, inductance and the self inductance that is already we know now let us discuss about three phase circuits we know when we are talking about single phase circuit it will be rotating like this starting at the 30 degrees 60 90 180 150 sorry 120 150 180 like uh, 360 how it is rotating first it is started at uh, 0 then 30 then 60 then right uh, 90 in which direction it is rotating in the counter clockwise uh, direction so i am talking about the basics of three phase circuits i am starting from single phase so the sinusoidal phase r is always rotating and uh, rotating in the counter clockwise direction first thing now while talking about three phase three phases will be rotating in the counter clockwise direction with the phase difference of 120 degree each so if you observe from each and every uh, sinusoidal we will be having three phases in case of three phase circuit va vb vc they all will be having 120 degree phase angle difference from each other it may be a voltage or it may be a current current also phase a current phase b current and phase c current all are having 120 degree phase angle difference from each other and they will be rotating in the counter clockwise direction just now i have given the proof here okay in three phase also same thing they will be rotating in the counter clockwise now if you are talking about star connection i can say so there are in case of star connection we can uh, represent the circuit in two way this is one way phase a phase b phase c they all will be connected to the neutral point a common terminal similarly if it can also be uh, drawn in this model phase a phase uh, sorry phase a and then phase b and then phase c okay see this is not c it should be b okay phase a from phase a 120 degree after 120 degree phase c will phase b will appear from phase b after 120 degree phase c will appear so that is the correct connection and uh, the another uh, common terminal will be neutral line so in star connection we will have four terminal neutral abc in delta this is the structural representation of delta phase a phase b phase c and between the phase c see uh, just observe the points how they are connecting the circuit 
this is the star connection sorry delta connection okay that is very important the alternative way of defining or designing the star uh, delta connection is like this between a b c we will be keep fixing the faces and if you observe in delta we will be having only three terminal whereas in star we will be having four terminal next the voltage current power relation for star under delta connection why talking about a star circuit i can say line voltage equal to root 3 times of per phase voltage and uh, line current will be equal to per phase current this is for star connected network yes while talking about a delta connected circuit i can say line voltage equal to e per phase voltage but line current will be equal to root 3 times of per phase current for both of this circuit the common formula real power formula is root 3 times of vl il cos phi this is in terms of line voltages and line current in terms of phase voltages it will be 3 times of per phase voltage per phase current into cos phi now while discussing about uh, reactive power this will be root 3 times of vl il into sin phi yes in terms of per phase quantity 3 times of v phase i phase sin phi now apart from this we'll have one more power that is apparent power it will be the combination of real power and reactive power the alternative way writing this apparent power is 3 times of per phase voltage into per phase current in conjugate or root 3 times of line voltage into line current we have to take conjugate okay so this is the relation between the voltage current and power when we are discussing about star and delta connection now if you are talking about the uh, star circuits and delta circuit first thing see this is the line current yes and if you observe this actually I, I am measuring this line current between phase A and phase B right it is I can call it as IAB right so this is line current uh, which is the reference current the first one A is the reference one B is the secondary one so reference is A so this is per phase current I can call it as IA means per phase current always you have to select the first one will be the reference so when I am considering per phase current with the line current you can see that per phase current is phase current is 30 degree leads your line current in case of star connection so in case of star connected network i can say per phase current always 30 degree leads line current phase current always 30 degree leads your line current in case of star connection coming back to delta if you observe delta you can take any any one circuit for an example if i am taking vry uh, versus vr so while talking about delta voltages are equal i don't have any problem but here if you observe line voltage v r y means line voltage we can call it as line voltage this is 30 degree leading uh, v r means per phase voltage yes so here i can say line voltage leads 30 degree per phase voltage understood so what is the difference here while talking about star connected circuit in case of star connected network this is star connection in case of star connected network while discussing about per phase current phase current 30 degree leads the line current yes or no yes while talking about delta what what we observe so here phase current is leading here line voltage is leading so here what i can say is line voltage 30 degree leads phase voltage this is the most important observation that you'll have to keep in your mind so this is all about uh, circuit theory complete concept so i have i hope i have completed the whole concept of circuit theory in a short manner as quick as possible if you remember all these uh, short uh, tricks uh, formulas whatever whatever the things that i have delivered definitely it will be support you for uh, to crack all the upcoming exams see apart from revising all the formulas by using this formula how many questions you are practicing that is very important that is the first step and second thing always keep clack with you and try to learn the learn how to manage the time don't spend more than three minutes in any question read the question collect the idea apply it try to figure out the answer if you are not getting go to the next question just around that question later you can solve it after uh, clearing your doubts so this is how you how to uh, solve the uh, practice the questions when you are uh, <coughs> practicing for your examination so this is all for this lecture in the next lecture we will be coming up with a new subject very all the best to everyone. Thank you all.